Bladen, uh, earlier you said you didn't listen to audio. Did you mean you didn't listen to, like, you weren't paying attention to the crowd noise or that you just don't listen to game audio when you're watching games? When I watch games, I do not have audio on. I mute the game. Like, when was the last time you watched a full game with audio? Probably the Brown Steelers playoff game. So you okay. watch, like, football games or with like, audio, yeah, but not basketball I, I games. I guess, like, if I'm... Okay, it's like the Brown Steelers playoff game, and I guess the Super Bowl I watched with audio. And you watch no other games with audio? Not recent, not in recent memory, no. That is so insane. I don't like listening to announcers. It's not that, like, oh, certain announcers are, like, annoying to me. It's... I just don't... I, I don't know. I just don't want, want to listen to that. I just want to watch the game. What? <laughs> that is crazy. <laughs> is that to weird? Me. Is that is that weird? This is worse than lemon ice cream. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Stay Hot Podcast. Just a reminder that we are on YouTube, Apple, and Spotify. So you know, whatever platform you're on, make sure you give us a rate, subscribe, review, whatever you're able to do. I am joined today by my two esteemed co-hosts, Matthew Spino and Theo Ash. How are you guys today? I'm fantastic as always, Bladen. Better than ever. Nice. Love to hear it. And also, be sure to give the Stay Hot Pod a follow on TikTok. It's just at Stay Hot Pod. You'll be getting some great content there if you do follow us. And uh, the Madden cover dropped. And, you know, it was, it was exactly the fear... It was exactly what I feared it would be, Brady and Mahomes, because they've both been on the cover in the last five years, and Madden has never done repeat cover athletes. Do, do you guys like this? I, I, maybe I'm being too nitpicky. I mean, I, I think don't it's, care. A, it's a decent cover. <laughs> I care a little bit because Rodgers isn't on it, and he's never been on it, and he's won MVP three times to the point where I wonder if he just doesn't want to be on it. I wonder if they ask him and he says no, because I feel like... I feel like when you win MVP, you just kind of get on the Madden cover. I think that's maybe not every, it, but it's not unless exactly you repeat MVP. Works, but, but if it's... you win three times and never get on it at all, and now they're going with uh, Mahomes and Brady, who have been on it very recently instead of Rodgers, it's either A, because they don't know where Rodgers is going to be next year and they don't want him in a Packers uniform, or B, it's just because Rodgers doesn't want to be on it. That was my only takeaway is that I thought it was a little bit strange that it wasn't Rodgers and it's never been Rodgers. But I mean, it's an interesting cover. I, it's 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 an aesthetically pleasing photo. Yeah, I I don't know. I guess I, again, I'm probably being nitpicky. It's just it feels like Madden hasn't improved in over a decade, and you know, at least the only thing that was changing was the cover, and now that's not even changing. So it's either this is going to be the best Madden in over a decade, or it's going to be them just getting lazier. I don't think the team working on the cover is the same team that's making gameplay improvements, most likely. It's still EA. I think I think this is one of those things where it's like, here's the big release of the cover. Ed, it's whatever. <laughs> um, I made a TikTok about the teaser thing, and I was like, I don't know why they would go with two barn animals for the cover. That makes no sense. <laughs> and since then, I've had a bunch of people being like, no, they represent goats as in greatest of all time. You don't get it. <laughs> I don't like Uh, two goats either. Two greatest of all time. That's so dumb. There's only one goat. Everyone always uses goats as in plural. Like, there are a bunch of goats on this. No, there's only one. People have overused that term. (laughs) I hated the term goat when it first started entering the mainstream lingo. Hated it. And now it's just so normalized that I use it too. But like, I, I feel the exact same way. I feel the exact same way. What term would you prefer? The greatest, just of like all the time. goat thing. It's like, oh, here's the, and then like somebody will, Tom Brady will tweet out something, and then ever all the responses will be like Boston sports news, and then it'll be like a, a gif of like a goat or whatever. <laughs> it, it's just it's getting. Uh, they have the goat has made it too easy to deem someone the greatest of all time. Goat is just an easy thing to say to someone, but it means the greatest of all time. And you've got two people who are the goat yeah. on the same cover. <laughs> it's like, I I don't like it. I don't like goat should hold more s- respect to be symbolized with a barn animal. Like it should, a, a goat <laughs> as an animal is just a very strange looking, uh, like discount sheep. And now that has been used to 
symbolize the best to ever do it and it's stripped the best to ever do it of all its meaning the word goat has so i don't like i don't like goats anymore i don't like them yeah no theo i'd I'd probably have to agree with you it does it goat should carry more magnitude and you know when you say goat it doesn't so greatest of all time you know definitely is a better way to phrase it but uh going on to the nba Kawhi got hurt and Paul George still found a way. We've talked about, you know, pandemic P, you know, hasn't, you know, been able to perform in the playoffs until the last two games where, or I guess, you know, the, yeah, the last, you know, few games where he's just been awesome. Yeah, I mean, he's been playing really well, not just last game, but for the last few games. He's got this skill set. It's just a matter of him stepping up. I don't know if it's just because he's not in his own head anymore or just because he's been like off social media or just because sometimes players get hot at the right time. Uh, but regardless, I'm feeling pretty good about the Clippers if Paul George keeps playing this way. Um, what I think is funny about it, though, is that instead of tweeting about Paul George playing really well, everybody's tweeting about how nobody is tweeting about Paul George <laughs> playing really well. You've made a video about this before. I swear you have. Yeah, it's just... Okay, we get it. And then these people who I know for a fact made Paul George jokes are then acting all like high and mighty. They're like, oh, where's the Paul George hate now? It's like, yeah, when he drops 40 points or whatever, (laughs) it's like he's not he's not going to get hate. when he plays bad. People are going to be like, hey, he played bad. Uh, It's not to say that, you know, I don't think he deserves a bunch of credit. He does. He's been playing awesome. But I don't know. I just think Twitter's funny about this. Yeah, and it's in playoff results are always a small sample size. Weird stuff can happen in the playoffs that affects your legacy disproportionately because there can be a bad series, which is seven games max, and that can really, really, really hurt you, even though sometimes it's just not on for you. And the Nuggets series and really the fourth quarter of the last Nuggets game did such a number on him. And I think there's something to be said for it because he had kind of there was a, a pattern of him not being super great in the playoffs. But really, how many games max was Paul has Paul George been legitimately bad in the playoffs? It was never impossible for him to turn it around. It was never so big of a sample size yeah. where it's like it can't happen. Um, I do like slandering players. I do think pandemic <laughs> P was kind of funny to talk about. I, I can't lie. But, you know, it's it, it's vaccinated P now vaccinated P. Um it was nice to see him kind of shed those, uh, sh- as much as I like getting jokes off, it was kind of nice to see him shed those uh, for a little bit here. We'll see. As the series gets into closeout mode, though, he's going to have to keep it up. Otherwise, it'll come back with a force greater than where- when it started. But yeah. yeah, that's my only thing. I don't know if that level of play is going to be sustainable. For a superstar, it is, yeah. And if it's not, then you know we don't know. But I also don't like, that's part of why I don't like judging playoff games because it is such a small sample size it's hard to actually get a measure of how good a player is so going back to the Kawhi injury you know comparing that to Chris Paul getting COVID how would you you know which team do you think is worse off for losing each player the Clippers 100% the Clippers like no doubt I mean Chris Paul could potentially miss like one game Chris Paul has done a lot for the Suns and even I mean I know we're talking you know he might only miss like one or two games but like that could be significant. It well, could yeah. be, yeah. But I mean, Kawhi has an ACL injury. Is Kawhi going to yeah. is Kawhi going to play for the rest of the playoffs? Probably not. He might. Yeah, I, 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 I don't genuinely know what, have no yeah, idea. Yeah, yeah no, I. we don't know. We don't know. But I would guess probably not. We don't know how symptom. We don't know anything about Chris Paul except for the fact that he has it. And so, I mean, there have been some athletes who really have not. Um, I mean, you can look at Cam Newton. You can look at Miles Garrett a little bit in the NFL. Um, yeah. You can look at some guys who got who got COVID and then just didn't quite come back the same. They came out a little bit, you know, out of shape, some breathing issues Jason Tatum had. So, I mean, that could be That's a long-term true, thing. That's true, yeah. Um, I mean, and, it totally could be long. Yeah, so I think, it, it's a, it's, I think right now I'm viewing it as kind of sim- like about the same. I'm not, it's pretty much splitting hairs. It could, we don't, both are very shrouded in obscurity and both are, players that their team needs to win the finals so to me i mean that's about it that's i mean chris paul was hurt for the lakers series he was not he was not good uh for a lot of that uh you you didn't really have a handle he had kind of a weird shot release and the suns did win that um against a very decimated lakers team um but i don't know it's about the same situation to me uh i I don't think they're any like super major 
clear cut one or the other. Plus, the Clippers just won their last game without Kawhi. So I don't know. Totally fair. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like the Clippers. I feel like the Clippers. You know, if Paul George continues to play this well, I think they'll be fine. But I, I think. But yeah, I, you're absolutely right. Both teams are going to need the uh, their you know respective stars to succeed if they want to make the finals. Moving on to Ben Simmons. Um, what's going on, <laughs> Matt? I know. I know you're all about the Ben Simmons slander. It's not even slander. It's just true. It's just true. <laughs> it's just how he is as a yeah. player. It, it, at this yeah, point, I keep it's getting just, told like, oh. Yeah, you're slandering Ben Simmons. No, I'm not. I'll be like, he can't shoot, and that's bad. And people will be like, well, why do you hate Ben Simmons? I don't. I don't hate him. He just can't shoot. It's just an objective I feel like, fact. Yeah, I feel like he's got two major problems, maybe three, and they're all compounding on each other right now. He can't shoot, he's not aggressive, and he gets in his own head. And now he can't shoot, and he's missing his free throws, so he doesn't want to be aggressive. And he keeps getting in his own head knowing he can't shoot, which makes his shooting even worse. I I tweeted this out just a minute ago. I think what's killing him, or part of what's killing him, because he's shooting 33% from the line, and people keep tweeting like, no, he's just a bad free throw shooter. He is not that bad. Nobody is just that bad straight up. I think the 76ers fans going nuts every time he makes a free throw is hurting him really bad. Do do they go? I don't I don't listen to like audio when I watch games. Do they go nuts? They, they go crazy, you, and that's bad for him. I know for weird. a fact because in every day you just feel like a dummy. You feel like you suck if people are going to go crazy when you do <laughs> yeah. something really simple like well, hit a free throw. That also puts a lot of pressure on you. Every shot or every free throw, it's like everyone's staring at you. That's ridiculous. And he only took four shots total in the last game, and he's an all star. Like. It's it's cowardly. He's a coward for only doing that. But it's 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 weird to think like would him taking more help the team? And it's just so weird to have a guy who is an all star and you're thinking, man, is he out? If he's out there playing offense, is that helping or hurting? And the fact that that might be hurting, I mean, it's just a disaster. It's a disaster. You cannot string together these big series wins if what who is supposed to be your second best player. You can't trust him to do anything on offense and Trey Young like torched him. <laughs> so like it's it's not like he's being this big plus shutting down their best on defense either. So mm-hmm. I mean it's it's a little bit of a liability because rebounds I don't care about. Like you can get as many rebounds as you want. Like if they're defensive boards, it's, a lot of it is just I mean, being tall and in the right place. It's a, a, bunch, it's like a lot important. of defensive it is offensive boards, but who especially cares? Airport. like for, right. for Ben Simmons. That's like such I'm not I'm like, well, on the one hand, he is scared to, you know, attack the basket or score in any capacity. But he does get seven rebounds a game. Like, yeah, <laughs> he's six foot ten. Yeah. He's probably he's in the right place at the right time. It fell into his like Russell Westbrook does that all the I, time. I always found it and weird like, that Ben Simmons also. is a guard as big as he is. That that never yeah, made sense to me, but it's because he's a good. Pa- it's, he's a really good passer, and he does get a lot of assists, and that's good, I guess. But I don't know. Maybe they should. Maybe they should think about moving him from guard and putting him in the in the paint. But he's not super aggressive either, so it's like I, I don't know. I don't know what to do with Ben Simmons. My, I don't think that he's very useful. I, and I th- I think that's interesting because okay, so I see all these 76ers fans. They're like, okay, well we're we're gonna trade Ben Simmons for what? For who? <laughs> who is t- who is trading for Ben Simmons? I would like a max contract <laughs> player who I don't know where to play him, and you can't run your offense through him, and he can't shoot. I really want that so bad. Right? Like that's that's the problem with him. And I'm I, you can look at him and you're like, okay, a very good defender. He's very good passer. He is very talented. But he's, I mean, for the next four years, you have to pay him big money, and he's proving that he can't be even. Can he be the third option on a team that's going to win a championship? Maybe, but even then, I'm not sure. So I don't, I don't know what team would take him. I guess somebody who would be willing to play him at like the four or the five and would want him to take an even smaller role in the offense. But then it seems like a he's a type of player. Contra- yeah, you know who I, I kind of think would might do that. Who? Charlotte. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, you have no faith in you. You talk about how Theo has no faith in like his organization to do the right thing. You have no faith in, in the Hornets to do the right thing. <laughs> it's not that I don't have faith in Charlotte. It's that if the Sixers are determined to get Ben Simmons off the team and 
he's considered a negative contract by the rest of the NBA, which I don't really know whether he is or not, because I still feel like he has a lot of talent and value to a team that can get creative with him, or maybe a team that can put him in a situation where we're rebuilding, go be as aggressive as you want, Ben Simmons, the expectation isn't to be a championship team right now, because in his rookie year, he was at least trying to take mid-range shots and trying to be more aggressive. He's taking less and less shots as his career goes on, but a team like Charlotte kind of makes sense. First off, we have the cap space for him. We wouldn't have to like trade away a bunch of uh, money to bring him in. And running him at the four or the five, this is going to get turned into a clip. And then everyone's going to think that I want <laughs> Ben Simmons on Charlotte, and that would be great. But running him at the four or the five would fix a lot of Charlotte's defensive problems that they have right now. And the fast break with Miles Bridges and LaMelo and Ben Simmons would be crazy. And... The lob threat with LaMelo would be crazy. There's some things that you could like about it. It's not all bad. Plus, Charlotte, the cap space would hurt us, but Charlotte's cap space isn't worth that much because we can't draw for, like big free agents. Yeah, that it's makes not, sense it's to not me. insane. That makes sense to me. Yeah. yeah right? about it, the, it kind of makes sense. It, 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 who, as someone, I, be, I don't understand NBA contracts the same way. I know it's just a little guaranteed. bit because I know like the NBA, there's like a soft cap. Yeah. Um, there's yeah there's so the there's luxury. a certain soft cap yeah. and then you can go over that as much as you want to re-sign your own guys basically. Yeah, that's, see that's I think that's weird. But what would you give up for Simmons? Like if you were the Hornets, what would you offer? If I was the Hornets, the only way that I'd be all right with the Hornets doing we would have to give up very 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 little, being completely honest. Um it would just be such a funky move, but he's so talented, and I feel like if we got really creative with him, you could still make something work. But he has to stop shooting 33% from the line. I don't know. It would only be in a scenario where the 76ers have no other options, and the 76ers just want to get off of him because they realize the fit with Embiid isn't working. It would probably be like a salary dump, honestly. Yeah. yeah, it's I not mean, a realistic move whatsoever. It, I want to say if it's the not Sixers realistic. Do that? Are they blowing up the team? No, I think I think you I saw a McCollum for Simmons deal posed, and I thought that was kind of interesting because you wouldn't really need him to be this like great scorer in 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 uh, Portland, and they need some defense in a in a bad way. So that was another <laughs> one. That's, that I thought yeah, was that's kind the of other place I think Portland makes a lot of sense, but. Um, I don't know. The problem I have with that is, is Dame going to stay? And then if Dame isn't going to stay, then I could see Simmons going in a really big package to Portland. But you would have to throw in uh, Tyrese Maxey and like four or five picks and pick swaps. And then even then, I think that New York could beat that offer if they wanted to. Yeah. Anyway, Bladen, uh earlier you said you didn't, you didn't listen to audio. Did you mean you didn't listen to like you weren't paying attention to the crowd noise or that you just don't? listen to game audio when you're watching games when i watch games i do not have audio on i mute the game and i like watch ever. it and i listen to like, music. when was the last time you watched a full game with audio probably the brown steelers playoff game so you okay. watch like football games or with like, audio, yeah, but not basketball or I, games. I guess like if i'm okay it's like the Browns steelers playoff game and i guess the super bowl i watched with audio and you watch like no other games with audio not recent not in recent memory no that is it's so like, I, I don't like insane. I don't like listening to announcers. Not like Harlan. Harlan is awesome. You don't like it's, it's like, not. It's not. It's not that like I think they're. It's not that like oh certain announcers are like annoying to me. It's I just don't. I, I don't know. I just don't want, want to listen to that. I just want to watch the game. What? <laughs> that is crazy. <laughs> is that to weird? Me. Is that is yes, that weird? That's absolutely weird. Did not want to hear the like the whole reason I'm watching the game is to watch the game. The game is the enter. Like I don't need someone else to entertain me. They're not there to entertain you. They're they're there the to only, give a little okay, bit I will of say a the, the only announcer that I on. really love. Um, I love Jim Donovan. That's my guy. I'm not even sure which one that is. <laughs> he, I, he's for the Browns. He's a Browns. Oh, guy. okay. So you want to hear people say good things about your team, and if they're not, <laughs> you don't want to listen to it. I the in every time I, I make a Browns hype video, I always use Jim Donovan. Like in the background, because his voice just like it's perfect for the Browns. I don't know why. There are other announcers um, who have really good voices that you would probably know if you okay, listen to them. Yeah, but like I don't know. It's so just, you don't listen to Gus Johnson? Not really. I've heard Gus right. Johnson. This is worse it's not than that, like, lemon ice cream. Oh, I hate That's Gus Johnson. Right. It's just normally when I listen when when I watch games, 
I don't have audio on. Like I that if I'm you should driving, listen to I the won't. audio in games. It it helps explain you're definitely what's going a, on. Like you would know yeah, exactly. You would, you're definitely you would, missing out. You're definitely missing out. Like especially with basketball. Like they they do a good job. Like kind of like noticing things that you normally wouldn't notice on like replays or like the Mike Green bang calls at the end of the game. The crowd yeah. noise. The crowd noise. Like I watch <laughs> NFL games back when I'm doing player reviews. Like the broadcast or the, the broadcast just like angle and just the broadcast version of the game and there's no crowd noise from this year and it sucks like it's so much better when you hear like the reaction of the crowd the announcer is getting hyped that is that is so much better than listening to i assume you're listening to kanye west who's awesome but it's like i don't need to listen to him well it's not as good as listening to an announcer like I, that is I listen to a lot of different music. Bad shit I don't know. It take. <laughs> I, I don't think it. I don't think it's that weird. I don't think it's that weird, dude. If you had, no, if you had seen or heard, I guess the Knicks Hawks series. How could you can't possibly listen to that series without audio? It totally changes like the viewing experience. <laughs> also, because they were going absolutely nuts. It was awesome. The only announcer that I would feel good about muting is the Hornets announcer. The Hornets <laughs> announcer is he should be in jail. He should be in jail. He is annoying. He is so annoying. It's like I don't listen to a lot of Hornets like home broadcasts, but like when you see any Hornets clip with him announcing, it's just like, oh no, my god, sweet. you need to. We had so if you're many a Hornets fan, maybe you late are. Game. I see people on I'm TikTok all fan. the time. You, I see I people get. on TikTok all the time making fun of the Nets broadcast team because it's just like kd with the bucket and i'm like what is KD yeah i mean they're they're pretty funny the but dude team. i'm telling you the hornets announcers are great and the and you know what i only saw people dislike them as soon as they started getting really popular then yeah, all of no a sudden all the because no one knows who they out. are <laughs> Because no one knew who they were. It's the Hor- who listens to the Hornets home broadcast, and then like these clips come out of him like freaking out over a free throw. It's like if I had to listen to that eighty-two games a year, uh, well, okay, I would- it's not all small, that, yeah, you have always, to attract one- people. You have to attract people somehow. It's a small market. What else are you supposed to do? I mean, it, it, that one free throw <laughs> late in the game. It's not. It, 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 you're just wrong on this one. Speaking of the Hornets, we have a legitimate, we've talked about the Hornets too much, but we have a legitimate Hornets story that is LaMelo just won Rookie of the Year, much to the delight. It's Matt's Super Bowl. It's Matt's, it's like three, <laughs> it really three is. Super Bowls in a row. Uh, yeah, I'm going to let you have I've seen a lot of that. people say that he didn't deserve it. And uh, that is uh, sad to hear. I get the argument for Anthony Edwards. I don't think it's invalid, but I still think it's LaMelo yes, Ball. Do. <laughs> no, I don't. Think I think well, okay. <laughs> I think that there's invalid? some arguments for Anthony Edwards that are really ridiculous. Like, it's a popularity contest. Was any other award given to like the most popular candidate? They they made Jokic the MVP. They made Rudy Gobert the depoy, who is literally the least popular player <laughs> in the league. They don't care about popularity. And yeah. Anthony Edwards isn't unpopular or anything. But regardless, I think what. Killed, I said this earlier. I think what killed Anthony Edwards is being really rough for the first half of the season. I think that people on Twitter care a lot less about that. In fact, I saw somebody say, uh, literally, I don't care about the first half of the season for Rookie <laughs> of the Year. So I think that's the difference between the voters and people watching on Twitter. The other thing that I wanted to talk about, a lot of people were asking me, well, how come when Embiid didn't win, or when Embiid was hurt, that kind of took him out of MVP, but when LaMelo's hurt, that didn't take him out of Rookie of the Year. I've seen a lot of, even Timberwolves fans say that, well, LaMelo Ball was better, but Anthony Edwards is still my Rookie of the Year. Whereas with Embiid and Jokic, that comparison, I think even a lot of people, even if Embiid hadn't played all the games, you're going to still see a lot of people take Jokic there. In fact, I would still take Jokic for MVP as much as I like Embiid. So just because two guys are... Injured doesn't mean that that's, the comparison is quite the same. I think Lamel deserved it. I made a video on it on my TikTok if you want to check that out. I'm super pumped. This is like the best thing to happen to the Hornets in the last five years. <laughs> is it really yeah. the, the best thing to happen? We haven't. I mean, years? since since we made the playoffs in 2016. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say you guys made the playoffs. That's like we've had some cooler games. We had like a really cool buzzer beater and like 60 points from Kemba. But didn't you guys like beat the Celtics that one time? 
I, I could have <laughs> sure we that was awesome. at some point. No, I'm just I'm just saying I remember <laughs> yes. I remember you guys had like some crazy game against the Celtics and you were like super pumped about it. Maybe there was I, the, maybe there I'm was the half court now. buzzer beater right against Portland. That Jeremy was Lamb, the, yeah, yeah, that was that's the only Hornets that moment. Cool. I, that's the only Hornets moment I can remember from the last five years. But as far as like not just like cool in the moment, but like overall impact or like a big deal. Yeah, since we haven't made the playoffs since 2016, so it's tough. All right, well, we're gonna hop into a uh, would you rather segment. And basically, we asked you guys to give us would you rather questions from you know both voicemail and email. And as always, as always, if you guys want to send us more questions and you want to send us more things to you know respond to, you can email us at stayhoppodcast at gmail dot com, or you can send us a voicemail at six one four three four nine eight zero five zero. Let's hop into this uh, first voicemail question. This is for the would you rather questions. Um, would you rather start your franchise with Josh Allen or Lamar Jackson? I would rather start my franchise with Josh Allen, I think. I think. I think. It, I think. it depends. It, it depends on how you want to run your offense because they're two totally different players. I think and that. I, I, think, I think like... Uh, go ahead, Bladen. Yeah, it's just I think if you wanted to do like this run heavy offense with, you know, you bring in a couple running backs and you're just like super, you know, heavy on the run game, you know, good offensive line, that kind of stuff, you go Lamar and then, you know, you bring in some solid receivers and, and you can still throw the ball. You have probably 3,000 passing and probably 2,500 total rushing yards from your entire team. And that, that would be like a great season for your offense. But if you wanted to bring in Josh Allen, you're going. You know, super fast, you know, awesome receivers, still a solid offensive line, probably not as deep in the running back area, and you're throwing all over the field, and you're probably putting up, you know, 4,000-plus passing yards a season and maybe only 1,000 or 1,500 rushing yards. But I, it just depends entirely how you want to run your offense. Yeah, I think Josh Allen has the biggest arm in the league. I think that he has one of the biggest arms of all time, and that gives him access to every single part of the field that opens up everything all the time. Lamar is a good, even at times a very good passer. He is not bad at it, but as a passer, he is not as good as Josh Allen. He is obviously an electric running running threat. He's a good passer and a great elite quarterback, or he can be. Um, I just think like having that ability to hit anywhere at any time, and also. I mean, it can be, it's hard to design a very quarterback run heavy. It's difficult to do. It's really difficult. Yeah. So I feel like you might be kind of going through offensive coordinators and it kind of limits on who you can hire and it kind of limits, I don't know. It's just, it's just so hard to kind of construct something that's never been constructed before. We've never really seen this happen with Lamar. So I don't know if I would, I don't know if I want the smoke of trying to find a way to perfectly <laughs> construct that when I have an option of just having a little bit more of a traditional thing, because I just don't know. I mean, I think the Ravens do a really good job with it, and especially in 2019, they did a really good job with it. Um, I think Greg Roman, their offensive coordinator, is not a great one, uh, and they what they do is gotten very, very kind of predictable, and I feel like it's just kind of a... It's just because I think a lot of it is just because it's hard to make an offense that really, really like is perfect for Lamar. I don't think it's as hard to make an offense as is perfect for Josh Allen. It's not like Josh Allen isn't is immobile by any means either. So it's a tough think, question. I, I would be I would be very happy with both. Impossible. I don't I don't it's think it's impossible. like as hard as you make it sound like to design an offense for Lamar. It's just that like it, you're you're trying to design a more traditional offense and you can't picture necessarily a world in which you would design you know, that more run-heavy offense. And I think you could also design an offense that wasn't so run-heavy but would still give Lamar that, you know, ability to use his legs more. I don't know. I feel like you got to do a lot of, like, you know, the zone read, read option kind of stuff with Lamar. Like, yeah, you have, like, you have Lamar. Stuff. He's yeah. so it, good it, running that, it, like, having that misdirection and having linebackers not sure where to go. And if you're going to do a bunch of read option, you need to do a bunch of running, too, because you're not going to just yeah. always do this. So I think it, he needs to kind of be in a run-heavy offense. Um, but it's very close. This is not, like, Lamar. Like, it is a very, very <laughs> yeah. close. I would just... I would just maybe very slightly lean to start a franchise, Josh Allen. Yeah, I think Josh Allen's better. 
and we all think Josh Allen's better. It doesn't really need to be any more complicated than that. And I think Lamar Jackson's awesome, but Josh Allen has like the biggest arm in the league, and you can do literally anything with him. Plus, he's bigger too. Yeah, yeah, I I, I would agree with you. I'd probably take Allen, but it, yeah, it's it's so close. I think. Um, now we have an emo question from Wilson. All right. And this this one I think is this one should be really easy I think uh, would you rather take a charge from Zion Williamson running right at you full speed or would you rather take a one hundred mile per hour Jacob Degrom fastball to the I, I do not want to get hit I, with I hope a I pronounced that name right Jacob Jacob Degrom yeah what? I don't want to get hit with a fastball I don't I'll take a charge no. I mean yeah that's, that's what I'm saying you're taking the charge all day. I, I looked at this question earlier, and I and I decided to do some research. Right, I know you know we're supposed to try and answer these on the fly, but I saw this and I was like, I want to see how damaging it would be if you got hit with a hundred mile an hour, hundred mile per hour fastball. It would probably kill you. <laughs> no, I don't think it would kill you unless you no, got hit like, the face. Kill you. No, it would not kill you. It would you. not kill I think you. It People would. get Stop. hit with a hundred mile an hour Stop. fastballs a lot. Okay, they would no, not you have kill to stand you. there and take it in the chest. It's not going to kill you. You're either getting, you have to you're stand, either getting No, he just said you had to stand there and take it. It would probably hit you in the shoulder. It would not kill you. It, sa- it says in the ribs. It says in the ribs. It probably it's means like the side, the side of your ribs because you're, you're in the batting cage like this. It hits you. It hits you right here. It would hurt like a, it would hurt really and bad. It, and it goes right through you and you die. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> it's a lady. It's not that it's going right <laughs> through you. It's right that there. if it if it hits you in between intervals of your heart beating, it could stop your heart. What Stop, are you talking dude, about? I'm sure. Maybe it or wouldn't it kill you, but least. it wouldn't kill us. We're built different here. <laughs> okay, You're well, built- then, by, by that sense, if you take a charge from Zion and you hit head first straight into the hardwood, that could split yeah, your that head could open. could also kill you. Yeah, you could bleed out. <laughs> he could hit you in the I, head, I guess, you black sure. out, and then you hit the head, you hit again on the floor. I would rather take the charge. I agree. Yeah, that I'm taking the charge all day. I would take the charge, and you could also kind of like... I guess yeah no I'm I'm not gonna like skate around it let's just pretend it's like full fourth in- yeah. impact uh, I'd rather take the charge from Zion yeah yeah I don't think that taking a charge from Zion is gonna break all your ribs I mean it would definitely hurt a lot but I think you can kind of just like lean out of it a little bit you can't lean out of a a fastball at all it's yeah, definitely that's... gonna break your ribs so yeah I'll take my odds with the Zion would not charge. kill you though for sure <laughs> it co- I'm I'm not gonna argue this but. Uh, I feel like if it could kill our... you, the b- baseball players would wear some, like, protection, <laughs> but they don't. Okay, they but baseball helmet. players are allowed to, like, duck and, like, like do things to try and evade. You have to stand there and take it. <laughs> it this could kill you, but you can kind of <laughs> duck and kind of try to evade it if you really if you really try. But it could definitely kill you if this if this hits you solidly. I, no. I don't know. I feel like it could. I feel like it could. If you let it hit P- you straight on. Pitchers I think, throw at people when okay, they're mad at them. Is that attempted like a 50, manslaughter? 50 is that a murder? Is that a murder charge? <laughs> like what? No, it's not going to kill you. Anyway, what's um, the next question? <laughs> Next next voicemail. Next voicemail. All right. My name is David from Canada, and I got a would you rather question. Would you rather have to guard Kyrie Irving or guard Tyreek Hill? Oh, God. Uh, I'm tall, so I feel like I could just kind of go in the paint. I think I'd rather guard Tyreek. Not Tyreek. Kyrie. Also, I like how he says he's from Canada as, like, the entire country, like, in not a specific place. <laughs> I appreciate that because I don't know my Canadian geography. <laughs> I've been there one time, though. Oh, man, that's tough. I think I'm better at defense in basketball than I am in football. Even though I played football, corner's, like, really hard to play. Guarding someone one on one's like, almost impossible. But also, I, there's no way in hell I'm guarding Kyrie. Um, I'm, I'm picking Tyreek. Not even yeah. close. Oh, you're yeah. Six, oh, you're six for foot sure. five. Who cares? Okay, first off, you're not guarding either of them. I no, could be nice. Yeah, this is, this is no a zero percent either. success rate versus a zero percent <laughs> success rate. Okay, so we all agree that it doesn't. Talking about whether or not you're good at defense in that sport, which I'm probably a better basketball defender than I am NFL cornerback, but that's besides the point. If I were to get burned really bad by Tyree Kill, I'm going to look dumb, but not nearly as dumb as if I get dropped by Kyrie Irving. Getting crossed way <laughs> worse than just getting burned. 
Okay, but so what if you I'll, just like I'll stand there? By you just like stand there, and you don't. And you just, well, you could do that for either one. So I'm still going. Tyreek. I feel like I'd have to run a lot farther to defend Tyreek, and I get really tired, and it wouldn't be. Well, I get tired probably defending Kyrie too. But you know, you do. Kind well, of I'm, I'm just. I'm, I'm not. I'm not pressing up on him. I'm playing way far back, and then if he takes a slant and takes it to the house, I, you know, it's my <laughs> fault, and it does look bad, but it doesn't look nearly as bad as getting crossed by. Like you could fall. <laughs> Terry kills the so, little guy. Maybe yeah. I would play press and I'd just jam him and he'd probably fall over. Oh, That's for sure. would happen. <laughs> Since he's so small. You would just bully him on the line. You would try to moss me, but I've got like just six inches Tyree on him, so him. I'm actually it's just like the gonna... reverse. It's like the reverse. I'm going to be like the kid the, who Jaylen did that. Ramsey question. Yeah. <laughs> I, would, I would rather take... I think... Since I am probably a slightly better basketball defender than I am a football defender, I take Kyrie. And I'm going to get embarrassed either and, and, way. Uh, Kyrie Irving has like the best handles of all time. <laughs> so I, I, there's no, if you, if anyone's going to cross you, it's him. Yes. And if he's going up against you, is this like one-on-one with Kyrie or is this in game? Oh, it's probably, then he could probably pull out something really crazy and he could like cross you up and then dunk on you to like, he could do multiple <laughs> things. I know Kyrie's not really like a, you're, like a, yeah, a dunker like, like that, but against you can, and me probably. Yeah, All right. You're, you're convincing me. I, I'm going to change my mind and take yeah. Ty, Tyreek. You've convinced me. All right. Next question. Hello, I'm Benjamin Johnson. I'm from Mississippi. Uh, I'm also a Hornets fan like Matt. So I'd like to ask the other Matt, one. Uh, would you rather have 10 seasons of LaMelo Ball on his rookie contract or have five seasons of Curry on the contract he's on right now. Thank you. I like that you said thank you. First off, Theo, not letting that comment get away. The other one, <laughs> that's what I always hear, you know. But one of these days, the Hornets are going to get good, and people are going to be like, oh, you're a bandwagon. Oh, all these bandwagon Hornets fans. It's going to happen eventually. I don't know when. That's a Someone tough called one. me a bandwagon Browns fan. Yeah, it's going to start happening. If they're good again this year, it'll start happening a lot yeah. more. Um, but I think that's a, a tough one because I'm assuming that we're looking at it from the Hornets' perspective, right? So Curry would instantly be the best player that the Hornets have ever had by a really wide margin. And I think that Curry is uh, still one of the best players in the league. Now, if we're talking about will he be the best pl- one of those players in five years, maybe, maybe not. But the big deciding or maybe one, one thing that I'm thinking about here is LaMelo being on a rookie contract is not as valuable as it could be for a team like the Hornets that can't bring in big time free agents. It kind of doesn't matter for us a little bit. Like if we had Curry on the team and we didn't have cap space, it would change what we're going to do this off season, but not nearly as much for the worse as it would a team like maybe the Warriors or the Lakers who can really bring in free agents. I'd probably go Curry. Probably, yeah. uh, even though I think Lamelo is going to eventually become that guy, it's too it's too big of a risk. I don't know if we're necessarily competing for a title with Curry, but it would be the closest we've ever gotten by a lot. I mean, if we make it out of the second round, it'll be the best season we've ever had. So yeah, I'd go I'd Curry. Probably, yeah, I'd probably take Curry too. I might go Lamelo. I might go Lamelo on a rookie contract. I think that the Clippers or not the Clippers, the Charlotte Hornets. Uh, I don't know. I feel like it's nice to just have a guy that is yours and a guy that is just a legend in, in on the team. And having Lamelo for ten years will probably, like, you probably feel confident that he could be that guy, and you get to see him for ten years instead of kind of being a curry, having a Curry rental for five. And all you need is like, if they get pretty good and they just need one, and you can, like, who is the big? I guess the Suns traded for Chris Paul. But, like, the Suns never are good without, like, a big major free agent signing. They got a Chris Paul in a trade, obviously, but that's not free agency. So I, I feel like you want to have a guy to just kind of be a franchise legend the whole time and a guy that does give you a ton of cap space to work with. Because if they start getting good and making the playoffs, maybe you do get some guy. You can get some guys like Jay Crowder or, or like, these kind of mercenary guys and LaMelo is the star, and you trade for another guy. I don't know. I would rather have LaMelo on the rookie contract for 10 than 30-something-year-old Curry, who is going to go down no matter what as a Warriors legend for for five. I don't know. I, I feel would, you I on that. All I'm going to say is the Cavs had LeBron James 
and they couldn't win anything. Except a title. Which they, got yeah. to the, they got to the finals, but like they couldn't win. And I, I know you're like, oh, well, if we got past the second round, that'd be the best season in history. But then after that, you'd be like, okay, now I want, I want more. I want a finals, right? Like and as a Browns game fan, you know, it's cool to make the playoffs. Yeah, but he had, he had to leave. And the team had to get good before he came back. I, I mean, I, I don't know. If, if, we're, if we're saying, well, Curry isn't going to be good enough. Is LaMelo ever going to be better than Curry is right now? Probably I don't know. Not. That's Probably a pretty not. tall task, and LaMelo is my guy. I definitely feel you on having like LaMelo be our dude, but I was looking at it from just a pure basketball yeah, perspective. No, no, no. If, we're talking, if we're talking like I'm the one doing it, yeah, I don't want LaMelo to go anywhere. Um, but also Curry, Del Curry, it wouldn't be like he's some random. Right, that's true. It would true. be cool to have him that in is Charlotte. True. Yeah, you can't go wrong with either of those options. It's going to be good for the Hornets either way. So Both would be good. Yes. Yeah. We can uh, say that. I don't, think, I don't think you could complain. This is the scenario, most but... anyone has ever talked about the Hornets on a national, like, not a Hornets-centered <laughs> podcast, ever. So how does it, this is a record. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, see, people always feel the need to be rude about the Hornets, <laughs> and I, I don't know what it I is. I feel the need to be rude to you. I feel the need to be rude to you yeah, not the me. hornets this is nothing about the hornets <laughs> I this is just, yeah it's, don't it's worry. all personal all right we have another email from uh hayden and he says would y'all rather have to go through a 10-year wwe wrestling career or a five-year <laughs> ufc career oh WWE. wrestling i don't actually have to die WWE. in wwe <laughs> yeah. i could be i could get you want to talk around. about dying <laughs> yeah, no. UFC. Yeah, like you would li- baseball. You would literally die in UFC. Yeah, unless and you took a fall every time. It would be hel- yeah. being a being a WWE fighter would be good because you could have a little bit of a showmanship. You could have like a character and be like fun, and then you yeah, get like thrown fun. through tables, and you get to like jump off of stuff. Like, and you're not actually getting like killed in the UFC. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, you got psychopaths that want to take your head off. Like, I don't get to dress up in a cape, cape or like a mask or like run around with this character. Hell no. I would rather go to jail than for five years well, than could. a UFC I don't think fight. there's any rules against that. I guess, <laughs> but UFC I would literally cape. rather be in jail for five years than be oh a UFC fighter for five years. Like, oh, I do not want to get killed. I don't want to die. I don't want to be in a ring with someone. A professional After trained this, psychopath, Jack, w- trying to kill me. Like I'll, I'll just chill in prison for five years. WWE, it would be a blast. <laughs> like, like I, After I would this, get I'm bang- gonna post a poll on Twitter. Would you yeah, rather right. be in jail for five years or be in the UFC for five years? Oh my! God. I don't know. Does that is that question implying that we're like good at UFC? I, is this like? I th- Would you rather like be a UFC right level fighter or a WWE level I, I guess, person? Yeah, I guess or is it that. just because if it's us, I mean, legitimately, there's no way you'd escape the UFC. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure I'd get injured either way, but there's no way you're escaping the UFC oh, yeah. without if, at if least some are, sort of significant injury. If you're a good fighter, I'd rather be in UFC. That That is true. Yeah. Because WWE is not is not is not real. Like WWE is is scripted and <laughs> Although okay, maybe like, it would be fun. Actually, actually, I would rather if I was a good fighter. I never mind because I'm talking about it's not real. It's scripted. <laughs> I'm an act. I was I was in theater for a long time. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a better actor than I would be if I, like that. That seems like an easy paycheck, and uh, I wouldn't still even if I was a good fighter. I would have <laughs> you heard it adoring here fans. You know, and I would WWE, WWE, WWE if you feel like. I would rather be in the WWE either way. I would rather be in the WWE either way. We have another email from our main man, Elliot. Would you rather have the best offensive line and the worst receiving core or the worst offensive line and the best receiving core? These questions, first of all, are like all over the place. We've been literally on every side of sports at this point, except for like golf. And baseball. Wait, no, we did talk about baseball. Yeah, we did. I would rather have the best offensive line easily. I would I would have the best receiving core. I'm an analytics guy. Up. Analytics say that receivers are more valuable. A, a top receiving a top receiving core is more valuable than a top. Did you watch the group. Super Bowl? <laughs> okay, that's not yeah. the worst offensive line in the league. That's the, like the worst yes. offensive line that's ever been like fielded. That's what it's going to look like for you every game. 
It's, no, I'm, not, I'm, it's I'm a bad offensive going. line and a great receiving core. That is that, not that's totally not, that's different not, than that's this not, question. That's not just a bad. That is the worst offensive line possible. Not just no, like it's not. Okay, in that's, nah, it's very that's, close. That's worse than the Jets' possible. offensive line was all year. Did you, how did the Jets do? And how are they going to do again? Do you feel okay, the, the Jets, Jets have a good wide receiving anyone. core now? Not the, not Jets, the best. Not the best. If they they had you're getting lit up. You can't run the football. Hopkins and Michael Thomas. You you want to be able to run the football. I'm going offensive line. You want to be able to protect your quarterback. Your quarterback's probably going to get hurt like Joe Burrow did. You're probably going to get like. How did, how did the Chargers do? They had a pretty good wide receiving core and quarterback. I, like, no, you want an offensive line. I don't. The analytics might say one individual wide receiver is better than one individual offensive lineman. Sure, I don't care what any of the research says. An offensive line is so crucial because you can you can run, you can protect the quarterback, and give a worse offensive line time to get out. Like, what is the, what is the best wide receiving core going to do if they have no time? They can maybe win a bunch of slant routes. Like, okay, I don't know. It's it's easy to me. Best offensive line. And the Super Bowl is a very good, a, a very good, like, example of why that's true. The way that I'm looking at this, Super Bowl 50, Panthers lose, and they had neither good wide <laughs> receivers or a good <laughs> offensive line. And I'm not sitting here wishing the Panthers had better receivers. I'm sitting here wishing <laughs> they had an offensive lineman who could block. You can get away with bad receivers. You can get away with bad receivers. And I don't even know, does that receiving core, does that include tight ends? Because you could also probably have good tight ends. Or you could have, you know, uh, maybe a running back who's really effective in the receiving game. But um, with an offensive line, that's bad offensive line, that screws both your running and passing game. Bad receivers just hurts the uh, passing The Ravens have made the playoffs two years in a row with a very good offensive line and a very bad wide receiving core. The Giants have a very good wide receiving core right now and a very bad offensive line. Who's in better position right now? They, they, the, they have like a bad the, quarterback. Well, yeah. well, that is true. It's but like, if you put Lamar, a, even if you put Lamar on the, even if you put Lamar on the Giants, I would say the Ravens' offense is a better fit for him. You're telling me, you're telling me that Lamar, Saquon Barkley, Kenny Galladay, and Kadarius Tony don't make the playoffs? With that offensive line, I don't know. That that offensive line sucks. It's. It's tough. I, I would offensive line is more important than receiving core. That's that's what it comes down to. We, right, we could debate question. this all, all day. Um, yeah. Next question. What's up, fellas? Uh, it's Aiden from Indiana. This is my second time calling into the show, and I got a would you rather for the podcast? Would you rather have one absolutely electric, excellent, top tier wide receiver? and absolutely nobody else in the receiving core, or three or four slightly above average receiving weapons as a quarterback. Like, I guess a bunch of, like, 75 to 80s in Madden versus 197. All right, bye, guys. Thank you. If we're talking about in Madden, give me the <laughs> one guy. If we're talking about in real life... <laughs> You need, you Honestly, need in real receiver. life, I'm taking the I'm taking the 75 or in Madden too. I'm taking it the the 75 80s. It's like, would you rather have like three Rashard Higgins or like one Tyreek Hill? Well, I would rather have one Tyreek Hill than Ty. But like, we're talking good wide receivers here. Like, really, like legitimately, like I think he means like Robert Woods types. Not Rashad oh. Higgins types. No disrespect what's wrong, what's wrong to Higgins. Richard, which, yeah, he's fine. He's Richard just like Higgins, he had one like what five hundred yard season. Like he's fine. He's just I think he means a little bit better than three that's Rashad not Higgins. Fault. It's a volume problem, not a Higgins. All right, problem. I, I do like Rashad Higgins. Like I'm not. I, that's not slant. I would rather have one Tyree kill than that. But yeah, it's I, I, always yeah, good yeah. to have more good players. An injury. Um, there are answers to take away yeah. one guy. You can do the Deion Sanders, put a number two corner on him, and then double the. Double the number one guy. There, there, exactly. there are answers to take care of. There are injuries you have to worry about. There are no answers for depth unless you have also great depth. But I would rather have more good players than right. just one top heavy thing. Exactly. Yeah, I think that right. one's pretty easy. We can all agree cool. on that one. Another voicemail, I believe. What's up, guys? Hey, what's up, guys? This is KJ. I'm from Kentucky. Uh, big fan of your podcast. Love listening to it. Uh, my would you rather question, I feel like this fits along with how the playoffs have been going right now. My would you rather question is, would you rather have Devin Booker or Donovan Mitchell for the next decade? They've both been playing awesome. Ooh. Also, um, I've been agreeing with Theo too much lately. Should I be concerned? <laughs> oh, yeah. No. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, I'm a great guy. Every once in a while, I'll find myself like agreeing with Theo three or four times in the row, and that'll let me know that I need to disagree with him on the next take. <laughs> um, you have to like decompress. 
So, I don't know. You're, so Donovan, Donovan Mitchell's Donovan been Mitchell. playing really well. But <laughs> I'd probably go Booker, honestly. They're really close, I, in my I, opinion. I do lean Booker. Mitchell um, keeps balling out in the playoffs. And I know we just said small sample size, but... I think Booker is just a little bit more efficient than Donovan Mitchell, or maybe even a lot more efficient than Donovan Mitchell. Uh, just like, and efficiency is good. Efficiency, you want someone. And Booker's like shooting splits are always kind of off the charts, ridiculous. Um, so I would go Booker there. Uh, Mitchell's awesome, though. Again, it's Suns and yeah. Jazz are a good rivalry. Uh, I know that I strongly dislike the Jazz as a Suns fan, is the team that I've kind of grown to dislike the most but Mitchell's a baller um you know I gotta go with my guy Booker but I I, I just think the and efficiency Booker's also standpoint cooler. so you, you gotta he, he is the, the cool coolest man in the NBA as I said <laughs> but uh he's he is the coolest man in the NBA but I wouldn't blame anyone for going Mitchell considering he drops like 50 in the playoffs it seems like one like a couple times he's gotten the opportunity so yeah I, I wouldn't blame you for saying Mitchell but I'd go Booker you guys all agree with me there? Well, gonna, am, I, am I saying something? Yeah, smart we do right agree now? with you. Oh, uh, let's let's yeah, go. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I th- I think so. They're really <laughs> close, and then it'll be one of those things where every time Booker gets hot and Donovan Mitchell gets cold, people will be like, "Why would you have ever taken Donovan Mitchell?" And then when the reverse happens, it'll be, "Why would you have ever taken Booker?" They're pretty comparable yeah. players, but I do like Booker's efficiency. Well, I think we'll finish it off with one more email from Moonlight Scrub, and he says, "Would you rather play?" <laughs> PlayStation or Xbox? It do not matter. I don't know. I, I <laughs> The first console I got was an Xbox, so I've stuck with Xbox. My friends are on Xbox. So Fair. I personally play Xbox. I don't play a whole lot of video games either way, so I'm not a big like console war stickler. Um, but I would rather play Xbox. But... I'm sure PlayStation. It's just it's the same thing. The control the controller looks the same. The buttons are in different orders. I don't know the different like they play. Although PlayStation does get better, like yeah, that's the only difference. PlayStation. As somebody who has an Xbox, we're Xbox guys too because our friends play on Xbox. Exactly. Uh, PlayStation has better exclusive. That's the only like real difference. That is true. Uh, so maybe it really be it's just whatever your friends have because that's. Outside, I mean, if I'm not playing with other people, I'm probably not playing anything other than like maybe 2K. Yeah. Like sometimes I play Rocket League. I've slowly been making the transition to more PC gaming uh just cuz like I have a PC. Um but yeah, PlayStation better exclusives, but all my friends play on Xbox, yeah. so You're I the gamer Xbox. here. Which one is better without I'm not, uh, I'm not you, even I don't know much, anything I about video Madden. game like This consoles. is our gamer expert right I, here. I, this I, is I play Madden. You just 2K. said you got a PC that makes you a gamer. You said I, you're a big I, gamer? I didn't get a PC for gaming though. I got a PC for video editing originally. I don't care. You're and a then gamer. you slowly Which turned into better? a gamer. You're a computer guy. Which one objectively has the better computing capacity? Of, of, of the Xbox and PlayStation, I don't yes. know. I haven't looked at the exact specs. Okay, um, I don't because know because I don't care. <laughs> um, if you want specs, go PC. But if if you don't care about specs, just get whatever your friends play with. Like it's <laughs> it's that simple. I think that's a good take. But I think that's going to wrap things up on our end. Uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> Your first good take of the episode. It's really that bothering you today, Theo. <laughs> you have been, nothing's you've bothering been me. It's just you. I have been this attacking, is, but, he, but what has he assault. said? He said that he doesn't listen to to sports with the with the sound on. <laughs> All right, he said that it. a fastball oh, would kill gosh. you. Like I don't. I don't know I what else. That to, it how, could kill you. Not that it would okay. kill you. Someone, you someone's going to look up. You said it would death by fastball. <laughs> and it find will some guy from like time, yeah. 1884 <laughs> or something. Have you ever looked at baseball stats? That's always funny to me. You look at baseball stats and it'll go back to like 1832 or something. It's like a right. pre Civil War era sports. <laughs> well, that's going to wrap things up for us. We really appreciate you guys tuning in. Again, you know, whatever platform you're on, make sure you rate, subscribe, review, whatever. And as always, hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. Thank you all for tuning in, and uh, we'll catch you on the flippity flop. <laughs>